currently there's around about 40% of homes that, that don't have a driveway. So if they are to switch to an electric vehicle, they're going to need some form uh, of on-street parking uh, or on-the-go car parking. Um, at present, charging options for, for those uh, kinds of EV owners are, are really limited to, to charging up on the go. So to try and find uh, publicly available fast and rapid chargers, either at motorway service stations uh, or, or in, in public car parks in town centres, uh, to charge at the workplace if, if that infrastructure exists. Uh, and also we're beginning to see uh, places such as supermarkets also offering uh, EV charging in, in their car parks. That remains you know, an option, but what we're likely to see in the future is, is councils beginning to roll out uh, EV charging infrastructure on street in residential areas. Uh, and these can be incorporated into street furniture such as bollards uh, or, or lampposts. Um, and it would be the councils as the highways owner uh, that would be putting this infrastructure in place. So yes, I believe that public electric vehicle charging infrastructure will be uh, in place and, and widespread by the time that we, we reach 2030. Um, it's likely to take the form of, of rapid chargers uh, along major transit routes that will allow uh, vehicles to charge up on the go over the course of a 15 minute coffee break, supplemented by uh, many more fast chargers located in, in town centre parking areas, uh, in the workplace, uh, and of course, uh, in the home where the majority of charging events will take place. Um, I don't see any reason why, uh, why this can't be delivered, uh, and I think the market will actually demand it. If the EV drivers are there, there is going to be the demand uh, for public charging infrastructure as well. One of the major advantages of electric vehicles is that they use around about a third of the energy uh, of an inefficient internal combustion engine. So you actually need a surprisingly little amount of electricity uh, to, to run an electric vehicle. And even if we transition the whole fleet uh, of transport vehicles over to electric, we're only likely to see around about a 25% increase in demand for electricity, which, you know, for such a huge um, CO2 saving gain just seems such a, a minimal price to, to, to pay really. We actually need very comparatively little extra generation. I think the question then arises about, okay, when is that extra 25% of, uh, of electricity use likely to occur? Um, and you know, particularly the concern that if everyone charges up at peak times in, in, in the early evening, around about seven o'clock, can our existing grid infrastructure cope? Um, I think there's, there's two ways around that is, is that we are seeing um, charge points in, incorporating smartness into them. You have to have a smart charger uh, to, to get the grant for uh, your electric vehicle charger, for example. And that smartness will allow a degree of control as to when those vehicles charge up and should allow the possibility to sort of shifting that through into the nighttime period where you know, demand for electricity is, is currently low uh, and we could, we could raise that uh, quite comfortably. I think clearly there's going to be hot spots within that. There will be local areas where the grid needs reinforcements. Um, but you know the expectation is is that is is that um, the current grid, as it stands, can accept a, a very very large uh, percentage of electric vehicles on the road. As we transition over to to electric vehicles, the the, the sort of momentum behind that transition is that the running costs of electric vehicles are much, much lower, maybe around about a third of the cost of running a vehicle on, on, on petrol or diesel. So for any business where, um, where, where transportation is a, a major part of, of their expenditure, then a switch to electric vehicles is going to save them a, a huge amount in, in running costs. 
Taxis are, are, are clearly the really obvious example here. And it's something we've seen before with, you, you know, the rise of the hybrids uh, in, in the early 2000s. Hybrids weren't particularly going anywhere in the early 2000s until taxi drivers picked up on, uh, on the Toyota Prius and, and the fact that it was just so much cheaper to run. It's virtually impossible to get a taxi these days that isn't a Toyota Prius. We're going to see exactly the same thing uh, with electric vehicles in, in that the running cost is, is just going to dictate what kind of vehicle you drive. And that's going to imply uh, an electric vehicle going forward. We're already seeing that happening with taxis where, um, where rapid charging uh, infrastructure can be put in place in, in, in town centres. Um, and we're also seeing, you know, fleets um, switching over to, to electric as, as well. That does imply an upgrade of the infrastructure on the, on the business premises itself. So the business would be looking at um, installing their own charge points for charging up their own fleet vehicles. <music> So the government set you know, a very clear trajectory for everyone by, by announcing that there will be a ban on, on the sales of internal combustion engine vehicles, including hybrids, uh, from the year 2030. And that sets a very, very clear signal um, to everybody uh, that you know, the future of transport is, is going to be electric, and, and it clearly lays out the, the direction of, of travel. That ban remains essentially a, a very effective policy stick uh, in the long term. I think what I'd like to see uh, is, is more of a, a policy carrot uh, in the short term to really incentivise the uptake of electric vehicles. Um, there is a little bit already being done in, in terms of, of road tax and so forth, but the main barrier for switching over to an electric vehicle is really about the, the, the additional upfront cost that is still incurred from an electric vehicle compared to an equivalent internal combustion engine vehicle. So I think the obvious step there would be to try and you know, recycle some of the tax revenue from the sale of petrol uh, and diesel and just divert that into, into an upfront subsidy uh, for the purchase of, of new electric vehicles. That would give you both a policy carrot and a policy stick operating in tandem uh, which is likely to result in, in a more effective overall suite of policy measures.